Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand. And now I'm a work at home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you. So scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hey guys, welcome back to the show this week. I am super excited about today's guest because it is an Etsy success story, but this one is going to be jam-packed with learning for y'all. Like the tips you're going to pick up today could completely change the game for your business. So on the podcast, I have Julie Oxendine, and she is the owner of Julie's Wreath Boutique, which you will hear you can find all over the internet on every platform. Julie is a stay-at-home mom with four kids. She's been married for 29 years, and she just happens to have an Etsy shop with over 10,000 sales. (laughs) No small feat. In October of 2015, Julie created her wreath-making business. As a mother with two young children at home, she was determined to help support her family financially. She started out by participating in craft fairs, and in 2016, she discovered that her sunflower wreath had gone viral on social media. As a result, she was asked to design a wreath for Country Sampler magazine. What? With her wreath design subsequently in high demand, Julie began selling wreath tutorials and established a lucrative passive income. In 2017, she started a YouTube channel, which currently has nearly 250,000 subscribers, where she works with national brands and has expanded her business to teach other creative artists how to best implement their social media platforms to grow and cultivate their online businesses. With over 900,000 combined followers from Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and TikTok, Julie has successfully developed a brand that brings in over six figures a year. From a struggling stay-at-home mother to a flourishing business owner, she built herself up from the ground and strives to help others achieve their goals from the ground floor up also. Let's welcome Julie onto the podcast. I know y'all are going to love this convo. Hi, Julie. Hi. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I am so happy to be here. I think that your story is such an amazing one, and I know that um, my precious listeners are going to gobble it up and they're going to be in love with you. Um, <laughs> so I'm just excited that you're willing to share it and it's so different and you've got such a unique skill set. So would you please start by like sharing some of your story with us? I, I want them to hear it. And like, how did you get into wreath making and how did you get into Etsy and all that good stuff? Okay. I would love to share it with them. About seven years ago, um, I was telling you this before we started, my husband kept on saying to me, we had two little ones at the time. I'm a mom of four, but um, we had a late in life, um, second part to our family. And so I I had two little ones. My other ones are adults now. Um, But um, anyways, my husband kept on saying, I think we need to start, you need to start a business. You need to start a business so that we can have those um, tax write-offs. And when you lose money in that business, it'll just help us in our taxes. And I was like, okay, that was just, was his mindset. And if you knew my husband, you would understand. So it was was kind of rolling my eyes in the background every time he said that. And so one day I was on Facebook and one of those, you know, like marketplace groups, like neighborhood groups, and somebody was trying to sell just a simple burlap wreath. And I looked at that wreath and I thought, Hmm, I, I can do that. I can make that wreath. Why couldn't I make it? Because she was selling her wreaths. I'm like, why can't I do that? So um, I decided I was just going to do it. And I sat at my kitchen table one day, came up with the name Julie's Wreath Boutique and just kind of started from there. And um, that was like October of 2015. And by February of um, 2016 was when I 
figured out how to put my first reef in my Etsy shop. Now I had had that Etsy shop since 2012, but it was under a different name and I sold one pair of earrings. So it was not a real true Etsy shop, you know, um, successful shop in, in any way. So I really kind of, I really say my, my Etsy experience started in February, 2016. I have no idea how this lady found it other than the month before that I had went viral on, um, in a Facebook group. And then that month I, in February, I went viral on Facebook for a sunflower wreath I had made. And so when I kind of honed in on what was my thing, and at the time it was the flower wreaths and um, because everybody makes, there's so many different styles you can make. And I know your, your viewers are creative and they all have different things that they do. But when I, when I figured out how I could hone in on the one product, that I was good at and that people would buy, that's when I started selling on Etsy. And that's when um, it kind of just kind of took off from there. And from that point, um, I started using social media. And as I would get through, I was on goodhousekeeping.com. I was in Country Sampler Magazine. Um, I was given opportunities to be on these different blogs and stuff. But I figured out, okay, that will only take you so far. So how do I get more people to my site on Etsy? Because honestly, there's only so much, you know, you can put everything on Etsy. You could fill every, you know, nook and cranny, dot every I, cross every T, but you got to get people to your shop too. You have to do the legwork in that. So that's when I kind of really started saying, okay, I got to start building my social media. So with that, and just now six and a half years later, I'm in a whole different spot. I don't, I, I make reads on YouTube and I teach people how to do it, but um, I really don't like have to sit in my workroom for eight hours a day making reads in order to make money. So that's kind of how I started. It was just kind of started as kind of like, oh, I could do that. And I just never dreamed six years later that I'm in this spot. I'm, I'm totally chuckling because that's literally exactly when I launched my sign shop and it was similar. Um, I saw Dia, I saw signs on, I think it was Pinterest for, we were doing my baby's nursery at the time. And I had a semi-viral blog um, for marriage and faith and all of that, that I still maintain. But it was, I literally had a Facebook page from that blog and I put up pictures of our DIY signs. And Julie, frankly, they were ugly, um, in my opinion now, oh, looking back at I had hot messes. I can't believe people, some people bought some of the stuff I put out there. I cannot believe I'm not the same maker that I was six years ago that I am now. It's just a million percent. And I'm now going to need you to send me before and after pictures because I was doing a <laughs> compilation for TikTok a while ago of like the, where I was and where I, you know, became in terms of like the sign making, but it's just I'm, I'm chuckling because of the, our timelines align so much. So like, were you already really crafty? I think it's so interesting that you just like saw this wreath and decided I can do that and I'm going to do it. And you sat down and did it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I grew up with a mom that was very crafty. And as a child, either, either was it her sewing an outfit for me? Cause I grew up in the eighties and, you know, she made a lot of my clothes for church and all that stuff. And I would cut out the patterns or we would be making crafts for the sister-in-laws that my mom would give at Christmas time. So I kind of learned how to be crafty just through her. And um, she passed away when I was 18 years old, but I've always kind of kept, you know, that, that craftiness with me. So yeah, definitely learned it from the time I was little. And, and back then I didn't even realize that YouTube was a thing until my son was born. And that's about eight years ago. So I started watching things, but there wasn't a lot on YouTube either as well. So I would just learn. And actually, um, here's a funny story. The person who works for me that I told you yesterday, she was at my house um, doing Pinterest and laundry for me. Amazing. I mean, that's just an absolute unicorn yeah. right there. She, she, was the she was the person that showed me how to make like a bubble wreath. No. Yes. She's the one that showed it to me. And she showed another friend of ours. And it was a hot mess what I made. But I mean, it's just like weird how everything kind of just takes a turn and just God says, here's your path. And I would have never thought a stay at home mom would be on that path. Okay. So I need to know <laughs> when you sat down with that 
went and decided, I'm going to try to make this wreath, was your husband's voice in the back of your head? Like, were you thinking right then, this could be the answer to this small business that apparently I'm not going to make any money at so we can write tax? Or was it totally separate? Like, I need to know the connection. I just wanted to make 50 bucks that week. You know what I mean? I just was like, um, I just like somebody actually bought a wreath. I Somebody paid me $35 for a wreath and I was just so happy. And, and what was funny, here's another kind of part to the story that I haven't shared. But um, so I started in October, did several craft shows, had some success with that. And during that time, I was really trying to find out, okay, so what am I good at? What, what the hardest part in selling a creative product is what will people buy? So good. Yes. And, and so what I figured out was that they would buy these flower wreaths. So all the different other wreaths, it just, they, I was spending all this money and I remember at Christmas time, I was so excited because I took my husband out for dinner at a nice place. And I'm like, oh, this is, you know, I sold some wreaths. I'm paying for dinner, you know, and I was so excited. And then I did my taxes in January. And that was a wake up call because I, because, because he was behind me on this endeavor, bless his heart. He was behind me. We were paycheck to paycheck. Um, and, and he said, just go for it, honey. Let's do it. He was a great supporter. And, um, when we did the taxes, I brought in $3,000, okay, from October to the end of January, okay. which I had never done. Wow. And I never thought people would buy my stuff, okay? But I spent $2,500. So I worked so hard and I did so many, I did like three or four craft shows and worked so hard getting ready for those. And, and just worked and worked and worked. And then I thought you made $500. So I remember being in the shower that day and saying, Lord, if this business is not going to change my family's life, I can't do it. And I, I tell you that very same day I got put in some Facebook group, have no idea how that happened. It was for home decorating. And I posted um, the two sunflowers I had made with different centers because I was in that shower and the Lord said, you need to, I think you need to do another center. So I made another center. I just, that idea popped into my head. So I put it in there and people went nuts for it. If I had known how messenger worked properly, I would have had a hundred orders, but I didn't know how that worked back then. I didn't know social media. I didn't understand Facebook. I didn't understand all of this. So from that, that's where a blogger from the UK saw it. She said, make me a, um, a DIY blog on it. And I said, yes. And my husband said, no. And, and, and I said, no, I'm going to tell people how I made it. And he's like, you can't tell people how you made it. I'm like, yes, I can tell people because here's the thing. Not everybody is going to buy from you, but some people might like the directions. And now from, from just sharing how I made something, I now sell tutorials on Etsy. And I make a passive income for ideas that are not on YouTube, but just kind of came from me. And um, so that's kind of how that came. But but God just used the whole thing. And we honed in on the flower wreath thing and we made money. And I worked really hard the first year and made a lot of sales on Etsy. And Etsy was just such a great starting point. And, and it's so it's a good platform to start. Do I think yes. you should always be on Etsy? Yes. If you've had a shop for 10 years and you don't have a website, I think you're you're missing something there. You really need your own website because Etsy is taking a lot of fees for you and you you could you could be doing both is what my point is. And it's really important to kind of diversify um yourself. But so I don't, I'm kind of rambling. So No, it's great. <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, we're gonna stop. okay, well then um Gosh, that's such an interesting pivot point. So in the very beginning, you were just selling your wreaths, right? And then when did the transition, when did you go from wreaths to selling um, instructions? And was it like, uh, was it overnight you switched it or did you start kind of adding the how-to videos? How did that work, the transition? It, from what I remember, and I could be wrong on this, but it, it was over a year process okay. where um, the following year I realized, you know, I did a lot of, I think the first year on Etsy, I did like $40,000 in sales Okay, wow. and those were all wreaths. And what I figured out was there is a physical limit on how much product that I could make reach. Yes. And, and, and I thought, okay, I, okay. That's not enough money 
in my opinion. For you, right. You work for your full time. So I was like, okay, so how do we take this to the next level? And at the time I was in a lot of different Facebook groups for wreath making before I started my own Facebook group um, for wreath making. And so um, what I would do is I would come up with these different ideas and I had like a Christmas tree and I had a marigold and I had an apple blossom. I And I did techniques and um, that nobody else was doing. And some of these techniques still nobody else is doing because they don't know my methods. Um, and I wanted to try to make wreaths that were as flower-like in real life as possible. And so I had a lady reach out to me um, who is in the wreath. She's kind of like a, a craft maker, a bow maker. And she says, Julie, these people are bugging you and they're bullying you in these groups because they just, they wanted to know how I made that wreath. And I was supposed to tell them how. And she said, don't tell them. She said, instead, make a video and sell it. And I was like, make a video, like, like a tutorial. And she says, yes, video yourself, edit it, make a tutorial and sell it. So from that point, it took me about three months to kind of figure out, okay, so how do we do this, so to speak? How do I make a tutorial? Okay. Where do I host it? How do I get it to my my customer? And it took about three months and I got like three tutorials up and it just, it really, really took off. And around that time, I had about 2,000 followers on Facebook. So from from then to now, it's just taken off and it's a great passive income. Okay, guys, I want you to note this because I this just hit me like a ton of bricks too. Um, a number of weeks ago, we had another episode um, that was about crochet patterns. Um, she had started out, I'll link it for you in the show notes, but she'd started out selling crochet pattern or crochet, actually handmade items and then moved into selling the patterns. And what I want you to, to note is that it was, a, it was Facebook groups that changed this entire game. Um, mm -hmm. So Absolutely. I'm just... We, okay, we'll talk about that later because you are so good at social media and we have to talk about that. But I just wanted to just extrapolate that out. So, Julie, I just love how you took this skill you developed. Okay, wreath making. You just decided you you just you kind of were just like looking at this thing and this $50 thing on Facebook Marketplace and thinking I could do that and I want to make 50 bucks. And you developed this skill. You're like, how can I how can I make something people want to buy? How can I hone this? And then you you put it on Etsy. And you know, I love that you took your time too, by the way. Um, you were like, I'm going to do this right. You then went and built an Etsy shop, which hello, still made $40,000 in that first year. No small feed. Thank you very much. And then you scaled it because yes, it's backbreaking work and you've got to figure out, you, you know, that's same with the sign shop. I, my hands can only paint so many signs. Right. Um, and then, which is, you know, why we're here now. And I'm in, I'm, I've pivoted also, but then you've moved into this entirely passive income space where you're, you've got a, you've got a teaching platform and you're selling digital products. This is amazing. So for listeners who may be interested, can we chat a bit about, about like the creating of the tutorials that you sell? Like the first thing I'm curious about is like, how do you create value for people? Like they, cause the, the truth is they can go to YouTube and find certain tutorials. And I know yours are different, but I would just love for you to talk a little bit about how do you get people to buy things that many people would perceive they can get for free? Um, okay. Well, that's where social media comes in really well. And you need to, um, I would be doing, um, Facebook lives and people would kind of get a feel for, you know, how I did, how I taught and, and that's where people can connect with you. And that's really important. So I would probably recommend if you're wanting to sell tutorials, maybe start on your Facebook or maybe it's your TikTok or your Instagram, wherever your favorite platform is, or YouTube. I'm on YouTube now. Um, to to show people what your style is. And when people see that style and they can relate to you, they will buy your product. So as far as putting the actual product together, it's very simple. It does not have to be hard. And sometimes I think we make things harder than they need to be. Um, when I started making these tutorials, I did get, I did invest in a camera, um, but I wouldn't even recommend you needing to invest in a camera. I, honestly, it's, this right here. Yep. Um, YouTube is run yep. by my, yep. It's run by my iPhone pro 13 max or whatever it's called. It's got the best camera on it. I literally, this is my workspace here and I would have, I have my camera over my workspace and I record everything like this. So when people say, well, I don't have a good camera, I don't have equipment. No, you've got, you've got it in your pocket. 
Um, most people have decent phones. And so just get some good lighting and it doesn't have to be fancy lighting. I literally have two desk lamps right here that I hit up on my wall and it bounces light back. I have little ring lights that hold my phone. And so it's just very, very simple. This podcast is brought to you by my very own website, howtosellyourstuff.com where I have created lots of free and paid tools to help you be successful with your new Etsy shop. As I've developed this business, I've really focused on thinking back to my early days of trying to figure Etsy out, and I brainstormed a list of the things that would have helped me make more sales earlier. And everything I'm creating over there is expressly to make sure that you can get there faster than I did. Two of my courses, Listings That Sell, and customer service templates are perfect resources for that fledgling Etsy seller. Listings that sell will teach you how to position your products for sales by setting up your listings with the best photos, keywords, and branding to attract your perfect customer. I'm showing you how research is your secret weapon for getting your product seen and sold, and I'm giving you my step-by-step process for how I personally research as a strategy in my own shop. Customer service is way more critical to sales than most shop owners realize. So in my mini e-course, Customer Service Templates, I'm teaching you my exact customer service strategy and providing you with templates of my specific wording for over 20 different customer service scenarios, including some of the hardest ones. You don't have to go figure out what to say and how to say it. I've already done that for you. One of the main keys to being a successful business owner is working harder on yourself than anything else. So go grab these courses and get yourself on the fast track to your Etsy shop goals. I can't wait to watch you do it. So what you do is you would record your video and then you would edit it. I like, um, let's see, um, what is it called? It's by Apple. It's <laughs> Oh, <movie>. the movie... <laughs> Um, yeah. on, on your MacBook, you can do it on your phone. You can do it on your um, iPad or whatever. That's what I like. You don't have to do that. If you like different things, you can do that. Edit it. And then what I use is I upload it to a place called Vimeo. Vimeo is a site where you can password protect your videos and you can either allow people to download that video. I do not allow them to do that or just simply allow them to watch it there. So basically what would happen is you would make the video, get a Vimeo account. You are going to, you are going to have to spend some money to host your um, videos there. It depends on how much um, space is on one of your, yeah. yeah, storage. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Um, so there's different levels. So I pay, I think I pay like $280 a year and it hosts those videos. And I'm telling you, people buy this stuff every single day. Anyways. Um, then you, you're going to create an Etsy listing for that. And you're going to be very clear that this is a digital product and you're going to just simply make a PDF. And on that PDF is the, um, the link to the video, the password, the supply list, and to remind people there's a copyright on this. This is not something that you are to share the techniques or any of the creative process that Julie uses. You are not to share any of these, but If you make a wreath from one of the videos that you learned from me, please sell your wreath. Make money on your wreath. Just don't tell people how you made it. If they want to know how you made it, you you point them my direction. So it's pretty simple. It's it's not that hard to do. It really isn't. Because Etsy will send them an email and say, download this PDF. You I can't believe you just gave away all that gold. And and you you said something else too that um I thought was amazing. And this is, it's what I ascribe to as well, but I want to make sure we hit on it. You did free, you'd still do free Facebook lives. And that's how people, so, cause I think some people would be like, oh, but then you're just giving away your ideas. Why would they ever buy anything? No, that's why they'll buy. Right. Right. Absolutely. Because when they get to know who you are as a creator and see your methods, I promise you, they will buy, they will buy. But, but honestly, I'm going to be honest too. It's going to be hard if you have 30 followers on Facebook to get, you're not, you're not going to sell a hundred tutorials that month. 
that's where social media comes in. And that is where I'm, that is my thing right now. And my niche right now is social media. Well, Julie, thanks for the perfect setup right there. Because my next question, that was just brilliant. Thank you. That was not planned, but I, that's exactly what I wanted to spend the bulk of our time together talking about, because this is your superpower. Marketing is your superpower. And like Etsy does a lot for us, right? You know, with yes. search engine optimization, using the right keywords, they're sending traffic our way. They're bringing shoppers to the platform, but you have taken matters into your own hands and taken this to like a whole new level. And your presence is jaw dropping to, in my opinion, you know, um, <laughs> with someone with, you know, maybe, maybe across all platforms, I have maybe 30, 40,000. So you're, I'm over here, you know, fangirling a little bit, but can you please tell us a little bit about how to create a marketing plan, because that's essentially what using social media is, right? Talk about that. And how can we actively be driving traffic to our own Etsy shops? Okay. So here's the key to anything. And, and guys, I don't have a degree in anything. I have one, one year of college and that's it. I got married and didn't turn back. Um, but I am a, I am a studier of social media and I, and I study different people out there and I watch and I'm like, okay, so what's working for them? What's not working for them? And I'm just kind of gleaning from that. So basically what I would say is number one, your name is important. Make sure that your name is about what you create and what you are. Um, mine is obviously reads. Now, if, if I had known six and a half years ago, Julie, you're, you're going to kind of pivot you're still going to be teaching crafting and all that, but you're going to kind of pivot into teaching people how to do social media in the creative space. I probably would have came up with a different name, but I didn't. So, but that's okay. That's all right. I'm still working with it. So anyways, it's important to, to know which social media is number one that you love. Where do you love spending time at? You know, Facebook is like the granddaddy of social media. I, I know not everybody loves to be on Facebook. But let me tell you, I have people say, oh, Facebook isn't where it's at. I beg to disagree. You know why? Because I have almost 300,000 followers over there. And I reach upwards to over 4 million accounts every single month. Oh my so gosh. If, if I'm reaching 4 million accounts every single month, then Facebook's not dead. Not dead. Now, <laughs> now, it might be a different... Um, type of person on Facebook, but that's okay. What I do on Facebook is not what I do on TikTok. And what I do on TikTok isn't what I do on YouTube. So each platform is different and you kind of have to decide what is it that you love? Because I would really encourage you to start where you love and you need at least two platforms. Now, if you do Facebook and Instagram, those two are so, I mean, they're the same company. It's, it's, it's Facebook owns Instagram. So I would really say then pick a third, if that makes sense. And so I got into TikTok last year, nine months ago, and now I have over 105,000 followers. And so it can be really good. And right now I'm going to tell you, and I know that there's some people watching that they're cringing and they're like, I don't dance. I don't sing. I'm not funny. And I'm going to tell you, you need to be on TikTok. Yep. And you need to be on Instagram doing reels and you need to be on Pinterest doing idea pins. And Facebook is slowly catching up to all that right now. And so my, my key here to anything, because I'm on all of them, is consistency. You cannot post once a week on Facebook business page and expect that Facebook is going to push yes. your content out to people because they're not, because they know that they can't count on you for content. And honestly, if you're on a platform, you are a content creator. I know you want to sell your product, but you can sell your product by creating that content. So you have to kind of play the game with them. So if on Facebook, um, you have a Facebook page, I would, if you're not posting anything right now, I would say at least post once a day and maybe twice a day. And then I would tell you, do not, do not post everything about you. You need to engage and cultivate that customer, or that audience, that yes. base. And so many times I look at people's business pages and I hear the same complaint, I'm not selling my reads. And I look at their business pages and they might be posting a good amount of time, but it's all their product. And what's happening, people don't want to be sold to every product. Yeah. They want, they want to, 
life is hard right now. Our world is hard. And I feel like people need lightheartedness. Yes. And I do that very well. If you check out my page in Julie's Read Boutique, my goal is to make you laugh. My goal is not to take yourself so seriously, but my goal is also at least to show you one time a day what I'm about and what I do. And so if that's about YouTube, I show YouTube. If it's about a wreath that I have for sale, I'm going to show you the wreath I have for sale. If it's about, um, I have an Amazon storefront. So, so people are always asking me, Hey, where did you get, where do you get these? You know, these are my favorite wire cutters. Well, I get, I get them at Amazon. Here's my link. What happens there? I make money. So, um, so my point is there's, there's more than just selling on Etsy to make money, but you have to show up to social media and you have to be there and you have to deliver the content. Okay. So basic, basic marketing strategy, pick two platforms that you already enjoy that you're familiar with because you're there and that's where you hang out and then create regular content and post at least once a day and think about your customer. So if it's just all about you, it's not going to keep people engaged. And if they constantly feel sold to, they're not going to feel, you know, engaged. Right. They're, okay. they're going to keep the scroll going. And, and the key to any, um, and I talk with my hands a lot, so you can see, um, <laughs> the key to any of the social media platforms is stopping the scroll. You have to stop the scroll because we live in an, in an TikTok has made all of us an AD, ADHD or whatever you want to call it <laughs> mindset for social media. Everything's a minute. You better get your point across and get over to the next one. And, and so you need to be able to, oh, okay, I'm stopping and seeing what she has today. I have people who come to my Facebook page every day, every morning, just to see what I posted. And they tell me this all the time. So those are the people that I can count on so that when I want to launch something like I'm doing right now, those are the people who have creative businesses. They see that I have an engagement. They see that I have people on my page talking and sharing. That's that's where it's at. If if this is the way I describe it, face, let's just talk take Facebook. If you make a post and somebody likes it, somebody waved to you, they said hi. And they, commented on the post they came up and they shook your hand okay oh cool. and okay. maybe gave you a hug depending on the comments because sometimes the comments aren't good um if they share the post oh they just gave you a hug okay and if they like comment and share they just gave you a big fat kiss you want the trifecta. You want them to like your post, to comment on your post, and to share your post. Because what does that do? That gets you in front of their friends. Yes. And then when they share your content, their friends are saying, oh, who's that? That's really funny. And then they come over and they follow you. And it's just like this domino effect. It really, truly is. It's all a domino effect. And it's about how can I get beyond the person who follows me? And so that's where TikTok is really great because you're in front of different people all the time. Whereas like on Instagram, um, before they did reels, it was just, you had to follow the person to see their content. And now with reels, it's like the TikTok. Everybody's trying to get on TikTok's bandwagon, which is great for us. You know what I mean? But um, it's all about trying to connect with somebody beyond who follows you. And then it just, just keeps going. So you've already given us so much about Facebook, which is great. <clears throat> um, you just, just so I get a better sense, you have a Facebook page, right? So it's not your personal profile. That's just for friends and family. You have no. a Facebook business page and you're doing regular posts, but you're also doing lives from there. I don't do lives too often anymore. Um, when I first started out a few years ago, I did more lives. Um, and I was scared to death to, to do a live. I just, I was scared to death. Yeah. And and so, but basically what it's done is I'm doing lives this week because I'm launching something. Um, but um, my point is I, that ended up kind of launching me into YouTube because what I would do is I would take these hot messes of a Facebook live after it was done, I would download it and I would upload it to YouTube and it was just such a hot mess. But now I know how to edit. I've done been editing my videos for a few years now. But um, it just kind of went from Facebook Lives into YouTube, which started a whole new revenue stream for me. Oh, I love that you leveraged that content. Okay, so today it's like your Facebook page with regular posts, and then you really leverage Facebook groups too, right? That's been a huge part. 
Yes, I have a Facebook group. Um, it's called Wreath Creators and More. And we started it. I started with another friend who's a wreath maker. And I believe we started it five years ago. Um, it might be six years this summer. But um, anyways, that has over 100,000 people in it. Oh, and my gosh. People sharing their wreaths and, and, you know, their love of crafting in there. And that was when I started that group the same week I started selling tutorials. So when I started that group, it just kind of like I was sharing all this stuff and people were like, I need to know how to make that. And it just kind of blew up overnight. And so that was just really um, a helpful thing for me. And it's and it and I look back on it and it's not that I planned it. It's just the way God put it in line for me. And it's just like his path from me standing in that shower and saying, God, if this isn't going to change my family's life, I can't do it. And he just has literally went 360 with our life. So I think that Facebook is so um, undervalued these days. And, and I understand why, and we're going to talk about TikTok in a second because you have killed the game there and I, it's amazing. Um, but I think that I just, I just want to encourage the listeners to still consider Facebook, especially if they're in a really crafty space, Absolutely. because I think that um, Facebook is the one social media platform that still feels very community. <laughs> if I'm going to make up my own words, because I feel very independent on Instagram and I might get pulled into a post and feel emotionally connected with them and respond, but I don't feel like I'm having a back and forth conversation with them so much. So TikTok, I, th I think I, I really feel entertained um, or yes. educated or inspired, but not connected. Mm -hmm. And um, Facebook is still the place where I personally perceive the most connection. And the more connection you have with your followers, the more they're going to know you, like you, trust you and buy from you. So I love that you are living proof that Facebook is so, so I just want to encourage people to, to still consider yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Don't give up on Facebook. It's still, it's still a good place to be. Is it, is it changed? Absolutely. But you know what? TikTok will change. I saw yesterday yes. TikTok is offering stories and now they're offering 10 minute videos. And I'm just like, okay, so now TikTok is trying to take from Facebook and Instagram. And I'm just like, okay, I just don't see that working well, if that makes sense. That's not why we went to TikTok in, in particular. Um, so yeah, I think Facebook is a good place to start. I really feel like um, also when you think of a business, where's the first place on social media that you're going to go to search for that business? It's going to be Facebook. Yes, or Instagram, you know, yes. You know, because they're going to have reviews or whatnot. If it's like the guy that did the siding on our house last year, I went oh, to his yeah. Facebook page. So my point is, is that that most people would go to Facebook to check first. So even if that's not your your favorite place to be, it doesn't have to be, but it's where the people are. And, um, but there's people on Pinterest and Instagram and, you know, TikTok. So it's, it's great because we've got all sorts of choices that we didn't have 20 years ago. And it's just an amazing opportunity to live in the online space, to be a creator, to be able to work from home, to sell your products on Etsy is something that we have just like, we're in a special time right now and it's going to even get better. It just gets better after this. I agree with you. Okay. So I love that we gave Facebook some love because I personally think it's going to be around until all the Gen Yers are dead. <laughs> no, it's not going to go away. I really, no, I mean, are, unless, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm a Gen Yer. <laughs> and I guess, you know, you know, it's going to be around for another 20 years, I'm sure. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Um, but I would love to switch gears to TikTok because it, I, you know, especially for this podcast, I've been amazed. I thought I was a little too old for TikTok and I do not dance. Um, and I am either do almost I. never funny. And yeah, so I didn't, I didn't realize there was all this amazing education side of it and just really interesting conversations happening. So I thought at 40 that I was going to have a struggle fest, but it's actually been one of the biggest propellers of this podcast and some of the other things on my business. So, but you like, I need to just bow to the master here because you've had like crazy viral TikToks. You've got over a hundred thousand followers over there. Like you have just <laughs> harnessed that beast. So, um, we would love to hear about that. Like maybe tell us about your viral video. I think that'd be a great starting point. Well, um, two weeks ago today, I put out a video of me making a cross wreath and it was a Dollar Tree wreath form and I used the, the mesh and I put flowers on it. 
But I started it off with really catchy music because that's key. Yes. And I just said, you're going to want to run to Dollar Tree for this one. And I don't know if that phrase got people to stay and watch it, but it now has over 1.5 million views. Um, in two weeks, I've gained um, 40,000 followers in two weeks. And what I like about okay. TikTok, TikTok is so... Okay, so this is what's exciting about TikTok. You can grow a platform faster on any platform out there, faster on TikTok than yes. any of them together. Yep. And I, I also believe that it used to be easier about a year ago to do so as well. Because I feel like people would get viral TikToks and they still only have 500 people that follow yes. them. But um, I think that when you're starting, when you're a creator, because I have two accounts. I have a personal account that I follow, the people that I want to follow. And then I have another account. It's not a business account. It's just Julie's Wreath Boutique. But it's curated around what I do on YouTube because I've gone away from making wreaths because I get people ask me every day, do you sell these wreaths? I want one of your wreaths. Okay. And I would love to make everybody's wreaths, but it just wouldn't allow me to do everything else that I do right now. And to kind of have the freedom that I have spent six years trying to create this yes. freedom. And so, cause I don't want to be chained to my work table, making eight wreaths a day and just killing my neck and killing my hands. So what I did on TikTok was I just took content from YouTube and condensed it down to a one minute video. And at first I didn't talk at all. I didn't talk at all. And it was just music and some people were watching it. And then I thought, oh, I can do a voiceover. Let me try a voiceover. And so I just really focused on making my voice very soft and very relatable. And um, people seem to enjoy that. I don't know why. I hate the sound of my voice. I hate the sound no. of my voice. I know, but people will tell me, oh, Julie, I love the sound of your voice. You're so soothing. Right now I have a something in my throat. But um, <clears throat> but I take them through the process. Do I share every little tidbit? No. I say, you're going to want to go to YouTube. So what I use a TikTok for or a Reel or a Pinterest ideal pen is you use it to drive that person to your product. So if you make something that on Etsy, let's say you make um, hand lettering signs. I'm sure. Is that what you did? Is this like the hand lettering? Okay. I am telling you, peep, I find, this is just from my own personal experience. I love to watch somebody do hand lettering on TikTok. I love to watch them. I will sit through that one minute video it's soothing, it's relaxing, and I want to see how it turns out. And it's like, show people what you're doing. It doesn't mean you have to give away all your little secrets, but if you show them the process, if you tell them a story, because what is what is TikTok about? It's about stories, story time, funny, little dance things, but you don't have to dance. You don't have to be funny. You can show them your story through your craft. And so I will do a voiceover. And I will tell them, go to YouTube. My link is in my bio. And I think you have to have a thousand uh, yes. followers to get that link. Yes, you do. Um, and I just recently figured that out, but I got to a thousand followers, I think within the first week. It's, so, it's, yeah, it doesn't have to be hard. Right. So it wasn't hard for me to get that link. And I hate to say it that way. But, no, but you can link your Instagram, which has a link. So right. in the meantime, you just direct people that way. Right. And you can link your YouTube and, and all that stuff too. Mm. People shop on Etsy for the unique experience of getting something handmade, packaged with care, and just way more meaningful than an average purchase, right? And since we Etsy sellers are completely obsessed with our packaging, and we know how much thoughtful packaging improves our customers' unboxing experience, I am super excited to introduce you to the brand No Issue. All one word, all lowercase, N-O-I-S-S-U-E, No Issue. No Issue makes eco-friendly, yay! and customizable packaging that is totally affordable for small businesses and Etsy sellers. Hello, next level branding for your shop. So that means that you can literally get a design that you created, something gorgeous you find on Canva, your logo, whatever you like, physically printed on your packaging materials. And if you're not naturally gifted at design, which is 100% me, <laughs> they have great tools right on the site to help you do it. No Issue literally has everything you need for your packaging, you guys. Like, they have tissue paper, washi tape, poly, ma poly mailers, stamps, stickers, boxes, food-safe paper if you're 
a, a food provider, and the list goes on. I couldn't fit it all here and not make this forever long. So y'all need to know that my clients rave about this company. It's the best way you can up your packaging game while also being environmentally friendly and set your shop apart by leveling up that customer experience. And not to mention your photo possibilities with your cute new packaging materials, like hello, Instagram. So if you've been buying your tissue paper at Walmart and your poly mailers from Amazon, try no issue instead. It's still affordable. It's so much cuter. And the earth will thank you for making an eco-friendly choice. Grab their link in the show notes and get ready to send serious happy mail to your customers. But my focus was take TikTok and, and, and transform that over to YouTube. So what happened in the last two weeks when I had that video go viral, well, my numbers on YouTube went up and they went up in subscriber count instead of, you know, I, I gained about three to 4,000 people in the last two weeks on YouTube and that to earn three to 4,000 more subscribers on YouTube is very unusual, you know, unless you have like a viral video on YouTube. So what else does that mean? Well, I monetized on YouTube. So that means my viewer numbers went up, my minutes watched, more monetized content got put out there and I make more money. So even though I'm not making a product to sell, I'm sending people over to YouTube because that's where I make money. So if you're making a product for Etsy, what do you say? You can find these in my Etsy shop. The link is in my bio. Check me out over there. You know what I'm saying? So so it's just such a great platform to send people to what you're doing. Now, this is a pet peeve of mine. I think showing a picture, if you're a wreath maker or a sign maker, and you're just showing pictures of your wreath and you're expecting to get people to comment, you're expecting people to share, you're expecting them to go to your Etsy shop. It's not going to happen. Those numbers are going to be low and you need to show the process. You need to give them a reason to go and check you out on Etsy. And that's what I like about TikTok. It's a story. It's a storytelling platform, basically. And it's all about in, in that first 10 seconds, you got to get people to stop scrolling. So that, that's, you think that's the difference between like TikToks that do really well and others that flop. You know, I, this oh, comes I, up a lot, you know, like I, I would love a little bit of uh, just a little bit of insight on like, what do you think is a good strategy to gain traction? Like what kind of content's really working? Um, I, I feel like when you have a good viewpoint of what you're doing, like for me, it's directly over my table and people can see what I'm doing. Okay. Versus you being across the room trying to film a TikTok. It's just really hard for people to see. People love to see um, people do home improvement projects. They love to see like what, what I said, the wording, the, the hand lettering, they like to see the process. So you give them a start to finish. Okay. Don't just start it and then be like, okay, yeah, you can go find it in my Etsy shop. No, finish it, make it fast. It doesn't have to be um, three minutes long. I would kind of tend to stay away from the three minute videos because it's, it's ADHD ville. It is. I, I, and I'm not trying to be coarse with that language, but even for my own mind, I'm, <clears throat> it's like, you have so much time to keep me on your page. Yeah. The first 10 seconds is your first chance. Um, I also find really helpful is if you say to them, um, if you love crafty stuff, you're going to want to follow me. I did that several times. And each time I do it, I gain 1500 followers in a couple hours. You know, but it's like, tell them, do the ask right away. You know, do, would I say do the ask in every single video? No, but um, it, it's about just kind of like honing in on what is it that you're wanting to do and make it very particular. Um, sometimes I get on there and I talk. I don't do a whole lot of talking like face to face on TikTok. I should probably do a little bit more of it, but people like to watch me make stuff. So that's where that's what I've done. And it's been successful for me. And I love that because, you know, a lot of probably the questions I would get is, oh, but I sell a digital product, but so do you. You're not selling the wreath. You're selling the how to make the course. Right, right. And I and, and people will watch me on YouTube and I don't even I don't even advertise that much that I have that digital product. Um, and, and people are still finding it and they're buying it. And Etsy wow. helps with that, too. Yeah. You know, Etsy pushes people my direction as well. But they but I would say half and half Etsy pushes people there but it probably about maybe 40% Etsy and 60% me. 
See, and so. this is this is your gold mine. So, um, and this was one of the main reasons I really wanted to have you because I love how you've harnessed social media to grow your own business, Julie. Like you're not just depending on Etsy. And it's so inspiring and so smart. And I know that, you know, with a new seller, it can feel a bit that can feel like a lot, right? You're already trying to figure out how to get your store set up, how to how to perfect your product and all that. So start with that for sure. Like you want to start just getting a few sales, getting your Etsy shop to work. But I think that that this like social media marketing is like that next skill that you need to master. Would you agree with that? Like once you oh, okay, absolutely. And and it's 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 vital to what you want to do, what you want to achieve, and it's. I'm so glad that I got onto TikTok because then that got me into Reels. And then Reels has, um, they offer bonuses to not everybody. And I haven't figured out why they haven't um, offered this to everybody. But then I'm making money making Reels. And then I'm making money because I made these ideal pens on Pinterest. And these are all basically TikToks, okay? Um, <clears throat> but I have over 17 million views a month on Pinterest right now. And what is that doing? That's sending people to YouTube. So I doubled my income on YouTube last year, doubled it just because I introduced TikTok reels and ideal pins on Pinterest. And then you've got shorts on YouTube. You can do that as well. But um, it's just there. I just, I, I, I get this question a lot. I'm not selling anything on Etsy. I'm like, okay, so what are you doing on social media? Well, I am not doing anything on social media. Well, that's why you're not selling on Etsy. You know, Etsy can only help you so much. Right, right. You have to, you can make the most beautiful product out there. And Etsy is, is going to help you just to a point. And after that point, you have to put in the legwork. And I'm telling you, if you put in the legwork, if you put in the work that it takes for social media, you will get paid back the money. You will get paid the time you're worth. And that is so important. I cannot cannot drive that point home. You cannot put stuff on Etsy and then be like, I don't know why anything's not selling. I can tell you exactly why it's not selling. And, and you've got to have your social media game. And you have to know how to do it. And if this 47-year-old mama can do it, you can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it. You make it very simple. I really love how you break things down and make it really digestible because I know for me, you know, when I was first learning social media and I was in my twenties and it, um, I was learning in 2012, I became a social media manager and it felt so overwhelming. It felt so complicated, but it's really not, you know, that's just the techie language jargon. You break it down so simply. So, um, okay. I do want to ask this and then, and then uh, and then we got to just one one more pit bit here on the social media. But if someone's like brand new to Etsy, because I am thinking about my sweet little people who haven't even started yet because they're scared or I yeah. talked them into it and they just launched, but they're probably feeling super overwhelmed right now. And I, I'm giving you a hug if you're feeling overwhelmed. But Julie, we're like with everything we touched on today, obviously they want to master their their shop first. Get your shop and your product figured out first. I'm also, I'm always telling them you need to start building an email list from day one. I think that's really important. But from everything you're sharing, what would you tell them to do like first in terms of social media? Okay. Yeah. Uh, two years ago would have been different um, than today. But um, what I would tell you to do is is um, listen to Lizzie here on uh, on how to sell your stuff on Etsy. Okay. Because this is, this is invaluable stuff. Okay, guys, you're getting information and you're getting it for free. And Lizzie has spent a lot of time working on this and getting that information to you. So watch Lizzie. Okay. As far as social media goes, I would start on TikTok. Yes. And, and I, and I would not have told you that a year ago, a year ago, I would have, I wasn't even doing anything on TikTok. I would have been like, oh, you got to be on Facebook. And, and I do, I think you should be on Facebook. Okay. But my point is, is that, okay, here, here, if you have somebody out there that's a soap maker, have you guys gone and looked at the soap makers on TikTok? Yes, right. Holy cow. They, listen, I'm not going to make soap. I'm not going to go buy the soap. I'm not going to pour the soap, but I will watch you make that soap and I will enjoy it and I will watch you and I will probably order from you if I like you enough. So if you make soap, and you're scared. Number one, everybody, there is not a woman, any businesswoman or man out there that doesn't say that they're not overwhelmed. They're lying to you. 
Right. I get overwhelmed a couple of times a day. Okay. It's okay. Same. You know, um, it's Y'all normal. Y'all crying to Julie at the beginning of this thing, needing my mama there it's talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we, we are, we are human. We have frailties. We are, we, we are just, we are, are, are just sinners. I'm just going to say it cause I'm a Christian and we have, we have, frailty and and we are not perfect there is nobody perfect on this earth and we're all going to have times in our day I can't do this I don't want to do this I'm so fearful of it don't be afraid just do it because sometimes pushing past that fear and doing the what you're doing is like oh okay all right you know I was fearful I got to work with Hobby Lobby this year I've worked with Hobby Lobby twice on sponsored content I'm working with another company right now I've got to be on Amazon live. They wanted me to come on their platform and, and they still want me to be on their platform um, doing lives for them. So it's like, yeah, I was scared to death, but I pushed through it and I did it. So my point is if you have a product and you're just getting on Etsy, get on TikTok, show your process. If you're a soap maker, show that process. People love it. I don't understand. They, and they're too they lazy to copy you. It. They're too lazy, right. I promise you. <laughs> they're not gonna, they're not gonna run out and get all the supplies and be your biggest competitor. If you think that people watching you on social media are gonna become your biggest competitor, then you're not doing social media right. You're not doing your job right. And you gotta focus on you and your customer base and ha- and stop worrying about everybody else. And so TikTok would be where I would tell people to start. I think that's brilliant. And it totally aligns with what's literally happened to me this year, never thinking I would do well on TikTok. So thank you, because this is your expertise. So I, I think there are two really important skills, Julie, that you have mastered. And the first one is, a hello, unicorn, how to attract a following on social media, which is no easy feat these days. It takes skill. I agree. TikTok is probably the easiest to get traction. But the second is, because you can have the audience, but the second is having the influence over those followers in a positive way to actually buy from you. Like this is is not an everyday thing. Ask 99% of Etsy sellers and any other business person. So uh, you have a seriously amazing service that you're launching. And that this is part of, I, I think we could all benefit learning from you is the point. Like I am (laughs) <laughs> salivating, wanting to, I'm just like, I want a million views on my TikToks. Um, <laughs> so you have this service. About TikTok is that's possible. I mean, you can have a thousand followers on TikTok and you put out the right content. It's possible. So that's what's exciting. I'm sorry. I, I interrupted. No, <laughs> I mean, interrupt me because you know more about it than I do. Like I want to hear, um, but I would, I would like to be able to share with our, with our listeners today, because I know a lot of them are struggling. I get the emails, I get the DMS, I get the, mm-hmm. the messages and they're looking for what you have. So, um, you're launching this service to help creative people and Etsy sellers specifically build their social media marketing platforms. And will you please tell us about it? And um, if you can give them an invitation for how they can plug into that, because my guess is a lot of them have just had their appetite wet today and they're like, okay, okay, I need to do this. I know I need to do this, but how? And you've got that solution. So. Okay. Well, I'm really excited because today's the, the official launch of Julie's Biz Boutique. And um I have put this off for years. For years, people have been in my DMs and my emails saying, Julie, when are you going to start a business group? When are you going to teach us what you know? And I was just like, it's just not the right time. I'm not there yet. And um, God has just been working on my heart. And I'm just like, okay, I'm in, in this, I'm scared to death, but I'm excited because I keep reminding, Julie, you have over 900 and I think 30,000 followers on all your platforms you know what you're talking about. And God is not, God is not here to put a spirit of fear in me. So we're going to move ahead. And um, what I'm going to offer is um, how to kind of, what do you need to do on Facebook? What do you need to do on Instagram? Pinterest. I feel like Pinterest is such an underutilized platform that people aren't really taking full advantage of. I could, I mean, at one point, I think 40% of my traffic a few years ago um, for wreath making, for selling wreaths, all came from Pinterest. It oh was amazing word. how much I sold was Pinterest. Um, that's how people found me. And so then they find you and then they buy again and, and then they follow you on social media. But 
um, my goal is to help creators, makers, artists kind of hone in on that social media because I feel like I've been there. I've been in every stage that you've been in where I had no idea how you worked Etsy. And that's one of the things we're going to work on is how do you do Etsy? And I have an Etsy expert that I just scheduled today about that. And um, basically we're going to have at least three trainings a month and we're going to have like these like challenges and um, where you can kind of earn time, like a a Zoom time with me um, one-on-one if you do like these social media homework challenges. Because I really want to inspire people to put in the work and see the results. And I've just decided it's time to do it. And so um, it launches today. It's called Julie's Biz Boutique. And um, right now for this one week until um, March 31st at midnight, I'm giving a founder's price. And so that founding member's price is only $29 a month. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's pretty, you know, you, you're in business groups. Is that a cheap? It's less than a dollar a day. That is a steal. Exactly. And this price will never be offered again. Okay. It's, well, it it's, will be it's too much value. So monthly membership, right? So they're yeah. going to get constant monthly. learning from you. Oh my gosh. Yep. It's a monthly membership. And even if they wanted to purchase for a year, I'll give you two months for free and it'll be $290 instead of you know, what 12 times 29 is. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a math person. We'll Don't ask me to help with your but I wanted to make it affordable and I wanted to kind of give my, my followers like this little like gift and say, okay, this is not a lot of money. And, and let's be honest, the gas prices are unreal Mm -hmm. and everything is going up. So I want to be able to help you. If you need to make money, if you are struggling with your social media and how to get your product in front of people's faces so that they will want to buy it, you're going, you're going to want to join Julie's Biz Boutique. And you're going to have the the link in the show notes, I think. (laughs) A million percent. Yeah. I'm going to have all the links to you in the, in the show notes, but especially this one, because um, I think that's a a steal of a price. I think that you have knowledge and insight that I haven't met someone in the Etsy space that has, like we may be able to go out there and find a social media expert, but they're not going to be specific to knowing exactly how Etsy works, how crafting works, how making works, how this space, this is very niche. And I'm always telling you guys, with everything you do, go niche. You know, the reason anyone, you really have to go very specific. And so this is like, you're the dream coach for this, for, for social media on Etsy. So Uh, thank you. You're welcome. And it's totally deserving. I'm not blowing smoke up your rear. Um, (laughs) Totally, (laughs) totally deserved. So yeah, I'm going to link all of that. And then I'm guessing, um, everyone's going to want to come follow you, Julie, where do you think are the, like, where would you, where, where's the best place for them to connect with you? Okay. So if you're a creator and you want to learn how to do crafty stuff, YouTube, um, the okay. neat thing about everything that I do and, and it's Julie's Wreath Boutique across the board <laughs> on Pinterest, Facebook, everything. It's Julie's Wreath Boutique. Um, so it's real. I'm really easy to find. So <laughs> But again, you would probably say whichever one is your favorite platform, you can find me there. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Okay. It's so I'll link your YouTube because I know that's yeah. the longer form content. That's mm-hmm. like the sweet spot. So I will link that, but you guys can find her at Julie's Wreath Boutique. And um, I, I honestly just wish we could keep going. It's been <laughs> like, it's been so valuable. You've been such a delight. Like this has been such a favorite, oh, such a favorite episode. So thank oh, you very much cool. for spending the time with me. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun to do. So I just really enjoyed it. I love your generosity. I love your attitude and your spirit about it all. I just, um, you are so lovable and so knowledgeable. So um, I'm just over here with chill bumps. It all feels good. <laughs> oh, sweet. I love you. I feel like we we really bonded today. So it's been great. We got I to mean, talk before this. I, yeah, you like I was saying, you guys, we all have uh, we all have days, and so you just got to find you got to find people you can talk to. And Julie's Julie's one of those for me. So, um, to all of you guys, I will see you next week, same time, same place. And Julie, I will talk to you soon. I hope. Okay, I can't wait. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. And that's a wrap on this episode of How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. 
If this episode was helpful to you, awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.